we are going back into space with Americans on American rockets, and we are going to Mars. We are on the cusp of the next big breakthrough in space exploration. It's interesting that this is at the very time that in our culture here on Earth, the movie uh, that's hearkening back, Star Wars, is coming out again, and it's to be such a blockbuster at the box office. Well, what is fictional in Star Trek and Star Wars is now becoming factual and in large part is what has been done in the nation's space program since the shutdown of the space shuttle back in 2011 and in the preparation, the new vehicles, the new rockets, the new spacecraft, the new satellites, the new exploratory missions that have gone on. Who among us merely three decades ago would think that the Hubble Space Telescope would look back into the far reaches of the universe close to the beginning of the beginning of that universe and start to unlock secrets through this telescope that is orbiting the earth that was put up by humans in the U.S. space shuttle. Uh, who among us would believe that we now are going to launch a telescope in 2018 that will look back in time to the very beginning of the source of light in the universe, the Big Bang, and understand this universe all the more and how it evolved in this magnificent creation that we earthlings observe of the heavens. And who among us uh, were not impatient over four decades ago when we landed on the moon that were impatient to go on and escape the bounds of Earth's gravity once again to get out and explore the heavens? Well, that is now becoming a reality. And it's becoming a reality in large part because of the budget that will be presented to the Congress, which we will pass, an appropriation that just in this present fiscal year that we find ourselves right now will increase NASA's budget $1.3 billion over what NASA was appropriated last year. For the first part of getting Americans on American rockets back into space since we haven't had Americans on American rockets since we shut down the space shuttle, that had to be done. That was an essentially extraordinarily uh, creative flying machine. But its design had inherent flaws that were risky for human beings and indeed, over 135 flights of the space shuttle, we lost two crews, 14 souls, uh, because of its design when there was a malfunction that there was no escape for the crew. But now, we have new rockets that will have the crew in a capsule on the top of the rocket so that if there is an explosion on the pad, an explosion in ascent all the way to orbit, you can still save the crew because you can separate them by the escape rockets from the main vehicle 
and save the crew, ultimately having them land or uh, by parachute, powered landing or a parachute landing and save the crew. And these rockets are almost ready to fly. Indeed, some of them have been flying for quite a while. Two companies, SpaceX and Boeing, will have the spacecraft. SpaceX, its capsule, its spacecraft called Dragon, sitting on top of a rocket that has flown many times called the Falcon 9. Boeing, in a spacecraft called the Starliner, that will sit upon the very proven Atlas V rocket. Which one will fly first, we do not know, but the fact is that's only two years away. 2017, they will fly with the first crews to and from the space station so that we no longer have to rely upon a very reliable partner that indeed helped us build the International Space Station to which we go and return, not only with crew, but cargo as well. We won't have to rely on the Soyuz anymore. We'll be flying on American rockets. And that's gonna happen in a short two years. And the assurance of that is this. It's the omnibus appropriations that's coming forth that has appropriated the amount needed that NASA needs to go on and keep this competition between SpaceX and Boeing going for developing hopefully two spacecraft that will be launching Americans on American rockets to and from our International Space Station. By the way, the space station, we have six human beings up there. It's an international crew. They're doing all kinds of experiments. And at another time and another date, I can tell you about some of those exciting things. We are going to Mars. We're going to Mars because we're developing a spacecraft called Orion that we have already test flown out to 3,600 miles to check its structural integrity on a ballistic reentry. That was done a year ago. And now we're building the largest, most powerful rocket ever on Earth called the Space Launch System, the SLS. Orion and SLS have also been given a boost in this appropriations bill. And so we are well on our way for the first test of this full up rocket with capsule in September of 2018. That's less than three years away with the first crewed vehicle after the first test in 2021. That is the forerunner to building the spacecraft and the technologies that can take human beings and keep them alive all the way from Earth to Mars, land on Mars, stay on Mars for a while, and return safely to the Earth. Star Wars, Star Trek, that's fiction. It's exciting, it's fiction. This is space fact. It's happening in front of our eyes. Now there are other things that are happening with this appropriations bill. We think in this solar system, if there is a chance for life besides Mars, or life that was there, and we want to know what happened. There's a moon around Jupiter called Europa. Europa is so cold 
that it has an exterior that is ice. But the gravitational pull of Jupiter as Europa goes around and around Jupiter is such that it causes the friction from an inner core that already has heat and heats up from the inside. So under this crust on Europa of ice is water. In our experience as earthlings, wherever we have found water, we have found life. And so is not Europa one of the best chances of there being life as we understand it in those oceans, a smaller body than Earth, Europa, and yet oceans that are twice the volume of oceans on planet Earth. That's a real possibility. And so in this appropriations bill, there is $1.6 billion to proceed on a plan for taking us to Europa to see if there is other life in our solar system. And Mr. President, there's also something that's very important to us earthlings, and that is that we need to know what's happening to the planet and we need to be able to predict and we need to be able to foretell because if a big storm's coming here, we want precise measurements to let us bound on the face of Tierra Firma to know what is that storm that's coming and what are the weather conditions. That accuracy is so important for us in our daily lives here on Earth, not even to speak of our national security. You could go through the rest of the NASA budget and you could see that it indeed sets us on a course for extraordinary space exploration as well as taking care of the aeronautical research, which is the other A in NASA, aeronautics, and that has a plus up from the president's request. Aeronautics giving all of the research on the technologies to make sure that our aviation industry is at the absolute cutting edge. Mr. President, we are going to Mars. And we are beginning this journey as we did with the test of the spacecraft a year ago. But that journey is going to accelerate. And in the lifetimes of many of those within the sound of my voice, they will witness a human crew, Americans, possibly an international crew, that will go all the way to the planet Mars and return. Indeed, what was science fiction based on science fact, the Matt Damon movie, The Martian, really is right within our grasp. And it's an exciting time as we bring our space exploration back to life so that the American people can see that there is a vibrant space program and that we have a goal, and that goal is the planet Mars.